Welcome to the Hive tutorial and uh, in this tutorial uh, we are actually working on uh, we'll try to find out what exactly the basics of Hive we'll try to see uh, what exactly Hive uh, does and uh, where to use Hive and uh, uh, why to go for Hive when we have different databases available and we'll try to see what exactly the Hive architecture is and we'll also uh, find out the components of Hive uh, we'll see how Hive works. Uh, we'll see how to, uh, you know, see uh, the, you know, the working of the Hive in the background, how it goes and how it records the tables and everything. What was the need of Hive? Why Facebook has developed Hive when Pig was there? And uh, what exactly uh, the benefits of Hive? What are the limitations of Hive? And uh, um, we'll see uh, what are the abilities of Hive query languages like uh, we'll try to find out uh, what other possibilities can be created when we are using hive uh, we'll see the difference between the traditional uh, rdbmss and the uh, and uh, you know the hive uh, apache hive we'll see uh, hive types and hive examples as well so uh, let me uh, go ahead on the next slide and we'll uh, see uh, what here uh, the hive says Okay, so uh, the first question arises is that uh, the Hive is in again a data warehousing system. So why we have to use a, a you know a data warehousing system and why what exactly uh, the Hive is and how it is helping uh, you know uh, the modern day technologies in order to uh, you know gain the new advantages and we will see what exactly uh, the data warehousing you know then this Hive data warehousing offers us in order to uh, you know fulfill those requirements we'll see the data models and we'll see the the data hierarchy of the of hive we'll also see the system architecture on the components so the agenda of this training is uh, to understand the the basic need of hive uh, when we have different uh, data warehousing system available in the market what exactly hive has uh, for us and how it is actually overcoming the problems which we are seeing in the normal day-to-day -day life and uh, we'll see uh, how hive has been created and what exactly the data models uh, of hives are are and the data hierarchy of the hive we'll see the hive architecture and its component we'll see uh, you know how hql that is hive query language works and we'll see some of the uh, you know relational operators uh, you know uh, you know as a, as a practical approach to hive so uh, basically this video will be uh, you know guiding you throughout uh, some of the theoretical theoretical uh, prospects and, and more of uh, you know the practical approach we'll understand the concepts of hive and then we'll move ahead and then try to you know install hive and then see you know how how exactly the hive you know works and you know uh, makes our life easier all right, so uh, let's go to uh, the third slide, which says uh, why another data warehousing system when we have different data warehousing system and you know the traditional data warehousing system are like uh, you know has has the you know a lot of capabilities, uh, but there are certain things which needs to be developed in order to uh, overcome couple of problems which I would like to uh, share over here, like. Uh, nowadays we see data you know data is everywhere so everything which is recorded means is data uh, for example if you are doing a transaction on atm or if you are sending an sms to your friend or if you are creating a post on your uh, facebook or tweeting anything on the twitter even if you are putting your pictures on instagram you are sharing any message to any of your friend that is data so everything is being recorded and everything is being uh, you know stored somewhere and now in the in this age of data if data is is spreading like anything so you need more uh, you know devices to hold the data you need more uh, you know powerful devices to process the data and you need more and more capabilities capability uh, you know uh, more and more capabilities in your system in order to you know process and analyze that data also so hive here exactly the hive comes into a picture wherein you actually realize that it is not easy for us to uh, 
realize the data and analyze the data with the traditional uh, you know data warehousing system and here hadoop come, hadoop and hive comes into the picture and they actually help us out in order to process the data with the new uh, technologies which we will be discussing right away so uh, as you can see that uh, uh, you know the lot of uh, social media sites and lot of uh, uh, you know uh, website uh, uh, you know the html 2.0 has come and a uh, lot of uh, you know uh, data has been created in the, in this uh, in this last uh, 10 years so we have several terabytes of data you know which has been collected and now we are on the verge of you know uh, data explore where we we do not know you know what to do with the data so here comes the importance of hive where actually you can process the data and you can see oh, what data we need to analyze and what data we need to keep uh, you know with with us so as you can see that several terabytes of data is is getting collected everywhere and now the 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 uh, with the help of this hadoop file system we are uh, we have a system which is scalable and which is highly available and which can be can be extended for the faster processing of data so hive actually complements this uh, data functionality of hadoop and uh, in hadoop uh, so what exactly the problem which we face in hadoop is that uh, map reduce is is very hard to program i mean not everyone can program map reduce when in order to process data if you want to store the data in in, in uh, any of the data warehousing and you need bigger and bigger system and they they uh, actually uh, you know cost you a lot of fortune so and in map reduce we have it is very hard to program uh, you know uh, the data warehousing concept so uh, hive comes for you know comes to us as a rescue and it gives us the functionality to use this data warehousing capabilities which is similar to sql like so we call it as hive ql hive query language so in this uh, particular data warehousing you need not to have any special skills to uh, you know program the map reduce jobs uh, you do not have to uh, you do not need to know java you do not need to know any of the programming language if you are if you know sql if you have the basics of sql you are good to go with hive ql as well so you need to understand the basics of hadoop how map reduce works and uh, if you understand those map reduce uh, basics and you understand the 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 basic concepts of sql you are pretty good to go and to learn uh, the hive uh, query language so uh moving on to the next uh, slide uh, we'll understand what exactly uh, you know uh, what where exactly the origin of hive happened and uh, you know what what exactly hive can do for us so hive was developed by facebook uh, you know as a and it is now with apache uh, i mean it, it is called as apache hive so apache uh, is, is working on it to you know build it more and more powerful so what happens uh, with facebook exactly uh, like when facebook started they have some gbs of data and as as their networks was growing and growing and growing it was very much essential for them to you know analyze the data and to store the data the traditional database their data warehousing management system were too much costly and it, they did not have the scalability with them so in order to scale them up you need to be uh, you need to spend a lot of money to uh, you know uh, create a new data warehousing system and again uh, it, it is come it comes with a, again a limitation so in order to uh, extend it further you need to buy a, a bigger data warehousing system again and that costs a lot of money so uh, facebook uh, actually comes uh, with an idea that we need to create a, a system which is scalable and uh, which can actually uh, you know uh, uh, grab the opportunity uh, grab the uh, functionality of hadoop and then actually can scale as much as we can as much hadoop can scale as, you know and in the similar fashion hive can can be scaled up so uh, so uh, facebook has developed it and uh, you know uh, it has the capability of uh, you know making data uh, you know immediately on the cluster and create and and, and create an uh, like uh, sql like queries for the for the people who are not from the programming background or who do not know uh, you know the, how to program the map reduce job 
so it's very easy for them uh, to you know perform the map reduce job and uh, you know do the uh, do the analysis on the data and you know store the data and shuffle the data and play with the data all right so understand what exactly the hive is um, so uh, as i said uh, it is built on uh, hive ql which is a sql like query language we call it a hive ql and uh, it interprets the uh, and generates a map reduce job that run on the cluster so it automatically creates the the cluster on your data and actually stores on sdfs to uh, 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 you know to processes and uh, sdfs is like nothing but uh, the hadoop distributed file system wherein you actually have got the cluster and you actually process it uh, uh, with the help of distributed computing it is very much uh, easy for us to enable uh, the summarization of the data uh, we can do ad hoc reporting we can do querying and the analysis we can analyze the large volume of data uh, with the with the help of hadoop like uh, we were doing in the data warehousing system so it is it's not completely replacing the data uh, uh, data the old data warehousing system but it is actually uh, giving you an edge over other data warehousing system uh wherein you can actually process the large volume of data in 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 a very fast manner so what hive is not uh hive is actually designed for batch processing that means if you uh, if you have uh, uh, very uh, large data which is uh, uh, you know uh, which is there to process then you can actually uh you know divide them into clusters and you can actually send it to a uh, hadoop system to process that data in the batch like a batch processing file or like the uh, the uh, the distributed file system it is nothing uh, like an oltp or real time system wherein you have the streaming data which is coming in and uh, you are analyzing that data for that we have different uh, uh, project from apache which is called uh, flume uh so uh it's not an old tp uh online transaction processing system which is uh, available in the market uh, with different uh, different vendors it's not an old tp system and it has got some limitations to it like uh it is uh, you know um, there is a, there is a small latency of data like uh, it's not that much fast as the uh, the rdp ms but it can process the large data so we have a small latency over there when you actually add the data and it goes into the hdfs system and then it process so it is uh, you know as compared to the traditional rdbms we do not have that much uh, faster processing because they were dedicatedly uh, made for the data processing but we do not have uh, that much leverage uh, we do not have that much advantages over here and uh, we can see uh, that it is a uh, there is a small delay and a small latency over here and uh, it is not that fast as the the traditional rdbms but it certainly has got the added advantage that it is uh, actually uh, able to process the much larger than larger data than the the traditional rdbmss as we know that hive uh, now know that hive is is uh, meant for a very large data type and uh, uh, it is it is actually uh, you know faster and uh, e it is very easy to process the data in in hive uh, as compared to the traditional data uh, you know traditional rdbms system or the traditional data warehousing system uh, it is very much uh, uh, possible that some people might want to you know uh, deal with the low data with hive or the low quantity of data for example 100 mb or uh, 500 mb of data but understanding this fact that hive is meant for very large data type it is meant for the, the petabytes of you know it is meant to you know uh, process the data which is of petabyte size uh, the if you try to process it with the small data set it would not be feasible for you and it might take much time than as compared to the traditional rdbms system for example if you want to query one line from a, RD, a traditional rdbms system it might take and if the data if the querying data is is much low the data warehousing system has is is uh, carrying a low data then the query will run very fast and you you uh, may find that the traditional rdbms is is much more faster in terms of running the, the small data when it, when it comes to uh, querying the data in the small uh, quantity so uh, what we have learned here is that it is faster 
when it comes to the you know petabytes or zettabytes of the uh, data processing it is actually complementing hadoop and it is uh, it it works on uh, the large data sets and it actually designed it is actually designed for the batch processing like uh, you know uh, uh, like the way hadoop does and it actually uh, you know uh, make the data uh, into into clusters so that hadoop can process it faster and it is for the people who are from the non programming background and they know the bit of sql and they understand the bit of map reduce job how map reduce is working and uh, how uh, sql queries work so like uh, like we have uh, you know the in, in sql we have uh, different types of uh, you know uh, systems wherein we can process the data in the different types of data similarly in hive ql as well we have uh, different types of uh, data which we can process they are of primitive types and the second one is complex types so uh, for example if you want to process uh, uh, the integers like uh, tiny integer or small integer maybe it could be a big integer as well so uh, in big integer also you can you can process the data and uh, you can uh, also process boolean data with it you can also process the the float and the double sort kind of uh, you know uh, the characters you can also process string characters and in complex if you come uh, on the uh, the complex part you can also uh, you know see the structures of map m group and arrays you can also uh, you know perform the complex data types structure over there so it's very easy for us to process the uh, you know th that complex data types as well and uh, uh, it is pretty much similar to uh, uh, to sql and uh, we have couple of a uh, couple of uh, you know uh, shortcomings as compared to sql uh, hyperql is is having some of the shortcomings which we will be discussing in this video later on so as compared to data models uh, uh, well, while we compare it with uh, you know the sql model it is very much similar to to sql and it has got uh, you know the, the similar uh, table structures and everything like we have in relational database structure so each table has the uh, has uh, the corresponding directory in hdfs and for, and we can we can access them like like we were doing in in sql like uh, we have the page view tables sort of a structure we have a uh, you know hdfs directory and then you can uh, you can you know check for the different sort of the the tables over there so it's pretty much similar to uh, what we have in sql and uh, the data models are, qu are quite similar to uh, you know uh, to sql what we were saying uh, earlier so uh, the partitions uh, we can create the partitions and the bucketing in in uh, uh, you know data models so we can also see uh, uh, you know the the indexes and the partitions of the columns we can uh, it is very much similar as we were having uh, we have something in in sql it is very much uh, possible for us to uh, create the indexes on the partitioning uh, of the columns similarly the nested sub directories in hdfs for each combination of partitional uh, column values is also available it is uh, giving it is also allowing allowing us to allow users to uh, create the uh, uh, you know the, the query so that it can retrieve and efficiently the rows and the columns separately so uh, we have this very much similar sort of structures in uh, in uh, hive ql and it actually goes uh, very pretty much similar so people uh, need not to worry about it we'll be seeing all those practical examples over here so here we see the data hierarchy of uh, hive uh, how hive is actually organized hierarchically and uh, we'll see that uh, we have uh, uh, you know this uh, hive is organized hierarchically into databases and tables and then partitions and the and the buckets or the or the clusters so we'll see what exactly these uh, databases are so uh, we we have to create the database and under under those a database is similar to very much similar to sql we have to create the tables under them and once we created the tables we have data built in it and we have like internal tables and the external tables there are two types of tables which are available uh, so internal tables in which uh, uh, we we have to put the data inside uh, these data warehousing system and the external tables are where the data is out and once you upload it into the hdfs hdfs is completely responsible to hold the data even if you remove the external table uh, data will be there in hdfs 
uh, while in internal tables we have uh, the data which is loading from uh, the, the hive to hdfs and if you uh, delete the the tables in hive the data in hdfs will also be removed and again um, we have some partitions partitions are uh, to basically to organize the data for example if we want to organize the data we have the, let's say uh, we have uh, data of the atms in in the complete country and we want to see uh, uh, whether uh, 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 kotak mahindra bank has got uh, some of the some numbers of atm in maharashtra or maybe in delhi so we can we can actually create partitions uh, on the basis of the bank names and then state wise so uh, similar structure can be followed in partitions and we can actually uh, you know uh, you know see our data as you know uh, which is like a bit of organized way uh, rather than having the clutter of data uh, we can have uh, you know some some organized way of uh, you know having some data in our in, in partition with the help of partitions so um, in partitions, uh, for example, I'll give you one more example. Let's say if I have a telecom data and I, I want to see uh, how many calls have been made uh, per user uh, of our prepaid customers in, in, uh, in each state. And I'm actually uh, uh, collecting the complete data in, in terms of January, February, March and April and, and, and so on, so on and so forth. Now, if we want to see like the, the people who are in Delhi, uh, how many calls they have uh, actually uh, made uh, during that, we will not be able to process it or uh, the, the processing of data would be very slow because we have actually uh, designed our database into January, February, March, April and all. And once we try to, uh, try to uh, fetch the data with the help of SQL query or the HiveQL query, uh, it will actually search the complete database and then it will match which all customers have got uh, the state name as Delhi or Maharashtra and then which all customers have got uh, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, uh, January date or January month data or maybe February month data. So it will actually check the complete uh, data warehousing system and then it will actually give you the results. It might take a long time and to avoid those clutter or the, to avoid those delay or the latency uh, in fetching the data we have something called uh, something you know called partitions these partitions are actually that we can uh, you know design our database in a way that uh, a particular uh, state uh, and a particular uh, month will have a certain amount of data and then with that particular state and then again you go to a next month data so that the data is organized and we can actually, uh, you know, uh, go into a hierarchical, uh, you know, uh, data modeling. Similarly, we have buckets. In buckets, what happens is like uh, we uh, we assign uh, some certain value to uh, the data uh, log, and once the data log actually uh, gets a certain value and it gets calculated and actually uh, gets into the cluster into different clusters. So once we get, uh, once we need to make the queries, and we can actually uh, uh, see uh, you know what exactly the, the value of that particular tag is and we can fetch the data from that particular uh, bucket or we can make the clusters of different data are uh, based on the different uh, you know uh, requirements of the users and then you can actually fetch the data as per the user need so partitioning and the bucket bucketing is one of the major features which is uh, very much helpful while we are trying to organize the data so in a database, we have uh, the name namespace uh, that actually separates the tables and other object objects. And uh, in once you get into the tables, it is uh, the it is the the data separation of data within the same schema. So uh, they are the there are the units of this uh, data which are very much similar to each other, but they are separate from each other so that you can actually. Uh, 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 you know, fetch the data from particular unit in case it, you require it to. Again, it is uh, very much uh, uh, similar to the uh, traditional RDBMS system as we have been doing in, in SQL. So, if if you know SQL, if you don't know SQL, uh, HiveQL is pretty much similar to it. So, if uh, you are learning HiveQL, that means you are also learning 
SQL. So uh, it's a vice versa, vice versa thing. So if you don't do not know SQL, do not worry about it. Uh, we have uh, the similar sort of structure in HiveQL and SQL as well. So similarly, in uh, we, let's go to partition partitions. Uh, in partitions, we actually find out uh, how the data is stored, and it is actually uh, gives us in an efficient way to access the subsets of the data. For example, if we have uh, the January month data and we want to analyze the, uh, the this particular state data, uh, then we can actually get the subs subsets of the data and we can actually uh, see that, okay, we have the January month of data and then we can move uh, later on to the subset of uh, the data for a different, uh, uh, different month. Similarly, in bucketing, we actually create cluster as I told you. We will sample uh, some of the partitions of the data and then we can actually keep on uh, adding them into different clusters. Uh, for example, one data, we have assigned it uh, a random value of, let's say we have uh, the cluster of 0 to 9 or A to Z. And uh, let's say uh, we want to see that, okay, this, this log has got the value A, then it actually goes into A cluster. And if it has got the value value uh, C, then it goes to C cluster. And for in the similar mash, uh, fashion, if it is um, has the value of M, it goes goes to M cluster. And we have 26 clusters over here. So as soon as we query uh, the data again, the, for example, if you want to fetch the data, we will say the uh, this I want this data which starts with M. So it uh, directly goes into M cluster and actually fetch the data from there. So to speed up the system, we use bucketing also as well. It also uh, uh, help help us, uh, you know, uh, uh, managing the data. So uh, partitioning and bucketing, we'll see as a practical examples in uh, in the later uh, in this video. Okay, so we understood uh, uh, the uh, hierarchical structure of Hive. We understood the namespace and uh, and the and the tables and their objects. We understood that the tables are the homogeneous units of data with, within the same schema. Uh, for example, if we have one data warehousing system and we uh, we keep a record of uh, call log or we keep a record of transaction of uh, of the ATMs, then we will all always have the similar sort of schema in, within one data warehousing system. Will not mix. Uh, you know, different sort of or uh, heterogeneous sort of uh, data sets into one data warehousing system. It allows us to do partitions. We have seen that and uh, uh, we have read that and we will see that practical examples over there. Let's move ahead. HiveQL uh, provides the basic SQL-like operations that I have told you. This is uh, uh, the pretty much similar to uh, SQL-like operations. So uh, if you know SQL, uh, you you might find it very much familiar that the columns we can select the columns using the select option like we have the select star from this particular database you have the similar sort of queries which we have in sql as well uh, we have the where clause similarly we can actually uh, filter the rows from there we have the joins which we can actually join uh, with the help of which we can actually join the tables um, we can do the aggregation uh, by the help of group by we have the we can store the queries um, uh, you know after performing those queries we can store into another table for example uh, if we want to see uh, how many people bought um, butter and bread together in january month and i have a complete data of store where we have some around 2000 to 3000 products so we can actually filter out those people who actually bought bread and butter uh, together in, in one transaction and then we can actually keep those uh, data separate uh, into another table and uh, creating a different uh, system to and those those tables can be moved to HDFS or Hadoop file system uh, you know uh, to process it further we can actually download we can download the results from uh, local directory as well you can uh, store that data and in your system as well and you can uh, move it to uh, hdfs as well also we can manage the tables and queries with the help of create drop and alter um, we have uh, different sort of uh, uh, you know uh, queries to manage the tables uh, in case we want to create uh, another table or we can do we want to drop a, a drop table or we want to drop any of the schema we can do that 
we can alter the table as well so uh, it's pretty much easier for us to uh, you know uh, do the operations in in hive ql and uh, it is pretty much similar to sql and uh, it works on the similar fashion like select where join group by uh, the, the queries uh, which we perform in sql and and uh, we can actually uh, you know uh, download the results and we have some couple of more queries like create drop alter which which we perform generally on sql so uh, it is uh, capable of uh, uh, process the complex data types and primitive data types as well we have already read that